Hey, welcome back everyone. Toy Shiz here, and today got a little something different, something new to check out. And of course, I'm talking about the brand new premium DNA Battletoads action figure line wave one. And I kind of had to consider what's the best way to show off the boxes for these suckers, because I'm not even joking you, as you'll soon see, these action figures are enormous. And yes, I did say Battletoads, which the first one we're checking out is, of course, General Slaughter Premium DNA right there on the box. And of course, collect them all. This figure is over 18 inches tall. No joke. On the back side of the box, you get a much better look at the figure, of course, until I yank him out of the box. But yes, it's a giant bull final boss, right? For those of you that remember the old arcade. And he comes with a bunch of extra head portraits, which all look awesome. And of course, here's everyone involved with the creation of these figures. So thank you very much for that. If you are interested in grabbing any of these, I will, of course, have affiliate links down in the description below. Now to go from the first largest to now the second largest, we have General Vermin. And yes, he's every bit... Uh, the vermin that you would expect, right? He's this big old rat creature. <laughs> and yes, he looks exactly like that in the box, which is quite cool. He's got some retrocious accessories. Love the puns there. And he also has a couple extra head portraits, just like General Slaughter. Now, there are a few minions, of course, in this Battletoads line, like Rat Bones, which... Yeah, that's pretty much the name, right? Now, if you don't remember this character, it's basically just a skeleton with a shield, and you're in luck. Yeah, he comes with all three shields. So, of course, if you wanted to army build, you could totally do that as well. But I do like the color combinations that they got going on. And along with Rat Bones, we also have Ebony, 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 Pork Pig, right? And <laughs> it's just a giant war pig basically and yes of course he does hail from the battle toads video game and speaking of which let's get some battle toads going on right so we have zits just an awesome frog if you ask me on the back side of the box you get to see zits and all his faux crunching accessories again they look just stupendous right i mean look at all these accessories inside the box that is wild along with zits we of course need the sunglass hero rash and i remember back in the day playing this on game boy at least that's what i got to enjoy yes the battle toads were quite a lot of fun even though it took a lot of heat from people back then because it was kind of like the GoBots, right oh you like battle toads yeah ninja turtles it's where is that it's Equally as awesome, right? But just to show you, again, the scalature of these boxes, right? From smallest to largest, <laughs> it's absolutely insane. So in the meantime, we're going to sit back, relax, grab ourselves a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Battletoads Wave 1 action figure line by Premium DNA. And of course, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. Very much appreciate the watchings. We've been checking out a lot of great action figures lately, right? Which is always nice to see. But if you haven't already subscribed, why not do it now? We have old toys. We got new toys. We have daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So we'll kick it off with Porca Pig. And one thing I want to point out, for those of you that may have been around this time, may have collected around this time, the early thousands were quite amazing. We had Palisades, we had Soda Toys, we had DC Direct, we had Kyoto, the sky was the limit. So much crazy action figure nonsense. But this Porca Pig is very reminiscent to me of those days. Now, it's a very simple figure. He has beautiful paint. He's got a curly Q tail on it, just don't pull it. But all the details, even in the helmet, the horns, the color of the skin, everything looks awesome. They went above and beyond for this Porca Pig. Now, you will get plenty of articulation out of a character like this and what he is supposed to do in a video game. Again, single joints and whatnot, they spin at the elbows, they'll spin at the knees. He has a little bit of an upper 
pig diaphragm rotation, right? But it will be kind of constrained because of his little jumpsuit kind of deal, right? Again, single jointed knees. I love the hooves. I like everything that you see, all the little details, all the sculpted nuances. It really is awesome to see. And like I said, brings back all that nostalgia of those types of action figures, including the heftiness. This is like a murder weapon. <laughs> but I digress. They did an excellent job for just, I mean, pork a pig, for God's sake. But they put all the emphasis into it, and they crafted one heck of a pig action figure. Now, to go with old Porka, we have Rat Bones. Now, in kind of the opposite side, I will say, I think that displayability-wise, Rat Bones looks great, as you can clearly see. And he comes with his three colored shields. The first one being a more brown tone, has a little strap in the back. It does have some silver around the outside and in the middle, and it looks like a worn shield, as with the blue. These will all be the exact same. It's really just the colors that change, but they're very well done. When he holds the shields, that's when it kind of becomes a little bit cumbersome. The strap can be kind of wide, too wide for the hand. It kind of slips off from time to time, but finding the right position, the right pose, it should set you up quite nicely. But of course, if you wanted to have a little fun and pose him with all three shields, you can definitely achieve that. The Battletoads will not be getting any hits anytime soon. Now, one thing though about Rat Bones is that while the sculpt looks great, while the paint is great, if you've ever come across some of those Halloween decorations around October, right, in the stores where it's all the different skeletal animals, that's what this action figure feels like. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not really a great thing either. He kind of feels very brittle, okay? He's a very light action figure. The sculpt, again, like I said, painted well. Everything is fantastic, and he does articulate nicely, but I would say go very easy until you really learn how this figure articulates, because I feel like if you were to move the arm in a certain direction without getting the actual joint lined up, it might go south real fast. Now, there's nothing in the way of loose joints or anything like that. You can get him in all kinds of crazy rat positions. The legs, they kick all the way out. Nothing loose, nothing falling over. That's great to see, of course. And again, all the different spikes, the elements of the bones, all of it really translates well to a character like Rat Bones and Premium DNA has done a great job. He even has some tail articulation as well, which is kind of funny because it's basically his spinal column, which goes all the way to the tail, and I like that. So through and through, it's well done. It's just the fact of it's the feel isn't there, and I would just say again and reiterate, if you do get this figure, go very easy until you really learn how he works. Because yes, he does make for an awesome figure displayed next to your Battletoads, as you'll soon see. And again, I absolutely love how the jaw moves. Now, to get into the actual Battletoads, we have Rash. And Rash is, of course, the Battletoad with the glasses, right? He's also the one with all the crazy foot contraptions, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But one thing that Premium DNA did is they really nailed the colors of everything. Everything looks worn, lived in. It has a nice wash like this boots with the big spikes on there, which are very sharp, I will say. Now, what you'll do is you'll simply pull off the feet of the Battletoads and just clip this in like you would a head portrait or if you were swapping out hands, which is Kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever done that with an action figure. He does have a great sturdy disposition to him, especially when you got him going on one foot. That's what those big old floppy feet are for, right? Now, with the giant shoe, then you also have this giant axe weapon. It has an amazing attention to detail on it. It's got a great wash. That looks like a bladed dirty weapon, but in the best of ways, right? Of course. Now, much like the giant boot with the spikes, yes, that's one of his powers in the old arcade video game. You could take some swipes at some enemies, of course, or 
put it on his arm if you wanted to go that route instead. The spike ball, it's the same deal. Very spiky spike ball, <laughs> as you see, painted beautifully. It even has this element of a spring to it. It's not really a spring, but it kind of feels like one at the same time. Just don't go too crazy with it. But like I said, in swapping out all the feet, which is kind of refreshing to say, usually you swap out the heads and the hands and all that. It looks great. Now, you do get a giant hand in case you want to backhand any of your enemies. But yes, you would simply swap the hands in this sense, specifically one, of course. But just be careful when you unplug the hands, plug everything in. Again, like I've said, go very easy until you really get to know the articulation scheme. But the hands are very well done. And of course, you have Rash himself, which... Those glasses are absolutely killer, along with that killer toothy smile, right? Now, one thing I really enjoy about this is that you got some bright colors going on. It's got great attention to detail. He doesn't have any peg holes on the bottom. That's something I do wish that they would start doing. But you get plenty of articulation out of this guy, especially in the head. As much as a head it is, right? It's like a big giant mouth with a pair of eyes. You can remove... The sunglasses, if you want to see his beautiful eyes. <laughs> but let's leave those on. That was actually terrifying the first time I popped those off. In terms of the articulation scheme, he actually gets some pretty decent articulation going on. I actually really like what they did here. Now, you don't have to really worry about anything going loose on you. Again, that's a plus, right? Because you want a nice, sturdy action figure for this type of video game character. Biceps, double jointed elbows, get plenty of rotation in the wrist. The legs will kick out just like that. No problems, again, with being loose. He's got the double jointed knees, but you will have to contend with a knee pad every once in a while, but it's a simple fix, right? It just goes up, goes down, and you get plenty of rotation in the feet, of which, yes, you can remove and put those weapons. And then one thing I want to point out is that he has drop down hinges on the legs and in the crotch groin area, right? So that's kind of cool to see. You get more of a kick out if you want to go that route. It's just a nice little touch, right? It's awesome to see a little bit of a different articulation scheme for these types of characters. If I'm being honest, I think they absolutely nailed the look of the Battletoads, the articulation scheme, the weapons, and everything. This is a home run of an action figure. And, of course... That's not the only Battletoad in Wave 1. So we also have Zitz, which, of course, is just the best name. Next to Pimple, of course. You got to have all those buzzwords from the 90s. He does come with an extra head portrait. That is something that Rash didn't have. And you can see how it attaches. It's just a, a, a mouth with eyes, right? He also has some extra hands, some item holding, and some pig and skeleton punching hands, we'll say. He also has a big old drill. And again, much like the other Battletoads, like all the other accessories for these characters, it just simply pops onto his hand. You'd pull out the hand, of course, pop that drill on, and it's painted beautifully. Then you have a giant fisted hand <laughs> with more spikes. You get to see the veins in the hand, and just like the big old drill, yeah, pop his hand off, get the specific hand, of course, and just pop it on and he's punching away. That is really cool. That is, again, attention to detail and the video games brought to life, which I absolutely love. Now, this was in the box. It totally surprised me. Like, oh, there's a whole subsection to this plasticness, right? This is basically a giant plow steamroller sort of deal, right? It's a big old mechanical device. Comes in two pieces in the box, which you can easily plug and unplug if you want to save yourself some space. Right here are the two pegs. You pop his hands out and simply fit his arms into that. It's very easy peasy, but the wash on it, the sheer size alone of this, I mean, it's basically the same size as Zitz, but plugging it into his arms, really bringing forth the video gameness of everything, chasing down a pork a pig. That is freaking rad. Well done, premium DNA toys. Now, in looking at the figure, oh yeah, we had lots to talk about there. We actually have a figure left to talk about. 
This is a basically the same copy as we'll say Rash, different colors of course, and he has a different belt scheme and then also different arms. So that's really the only difference between the two. You can just pop the heads, which again, across the board, all of these figures, no problems, popping the heads off, swapping them at will, right? You don't have to pull anything off. And if you want, you can totally put Rash's sunglasses on Zitz if you wanted to go that route, right? Everything kind of clips in a-okay. Now, in terms of articulation, as I said, very minimal differences here and there. It's basically the color scheme, the gloves. But one thing I did run into with Zitz is that on this leg right here, he got a little bit loose over time, and that's a bummer. Didn't happen to me on Rash, but on Zitz, yeah, when you started kind of standing him and doing all that kind of stuff, I found that. Really like the belt. I love that he have all that paint, everything on the gloves right there. Those are cool. His gauntlets. Again, they did a great job with the battle toads. Now, to go from regular sized figures, more or less, to now a jumbo figure, and you have General Vermin. And this made me laugh. This is when I thought, you know what? This is not something that happens anymore in the toy world. You have a giant sculpted rat general with a ton of accessories, right? That is very cool. Now, he does come with a giant whip. I'm not even joking you. Cat of nine tails, whatever you want to call it. But it has this beautiful grip. It has this skull on it. They went above and beyond for this. This is mind-blowing to me, right? Then you have all these little spikes. All the paint looks great. The handle looks worn. It just is awesome. And he has one specific hand to hold that whip. They didn't need to go this crazy with the Battletoads line, but they definitely did. And that General Vermin just looks awesome. Now, he comes with these big old interswappable rat hands. Again, the sculpt is great. The paint is good. It just looks awesome. I mean, all the details, all the veins in the back of the hands, that is killer. <laughs> and yes, like I said, you can swap everything at your leisure, including these giant heads, which have a lot of weight to them. Each of them are very heavy. And that, to be honest with you, it might lead to kind of a downside of this figure, but that's coming up in just a second because the paint on this, Everything about it just really stands out. Even right here with this alternate head, which looks like he got punched, right? One eye's closed, the other eye's open. That is just very cool. And again, you look inside, you got all the teeth, you got the red of the tongue and inside of the mouth, and you got the ears. It just looks freaking rad. I do love the way that this head portrait came out. Just for the expression itself, and then utilizing those open hands, right? Yes, you can really punch the heck out of this character, but this right here, this, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how I would film this because of just how sheerly massive this figure is, right? You can see the paint, they did not skimp. You got wash every which way. You got the gauntlets, you got purple, you got the fingernails. Everything looks above and beyond for this character and it is a massive action figure and it's heavy as heck. This is by far, we'll say, well, with the next one coming up, but just for this type of size of this character, super heavy, we'll just say. Now, you will get fairly decent articulation in the head, but he will knock into his giant spiked shoulder pads, that's for sure. On the backside, the sculpt continues. You got some airbrushing. You got this nice outline. Brings out all the details of his spine, right? That looks cool. He's got his tattered purple Hulk pants. He's got his big old rat legs, which go into his big old rat feet. All the details of that too. You got all the veins, you got his toenails. And again, just to point out, all these little subtle sculpting marks, these are things that I miss of these toys that I used to grow up with and collect. They've really brought back those memories. The one bummer here is where the abdomen then meets his lower body. Something has come loose. You push it down, but every once in a while, when you, when you go to move him, 
because his upper diaphragm is so heavy, and that would be the heaviest part on him, it keeps wanting to separate, unfortunately. It's not a huge problem, but in looking at, let's say, the ab crunch, he has a little bit of it. The arms will go all the way up, all the way out. He has a bicep swivel. He's got double joints, but then it only moves to a certain degree when you want to use that because his gauntlets will get in the way but the bicep definitely works you got some hand rotation and you can interchange those at your leisure now again back down here you have these legs and like i said the upper part of his body is so heavy you get some decent articulation out of this character like you get double jointed knees and you got the ankle rocker but those legs and the feet because he's so massive don't support him you really have to get this character lined up perfectly for it to then not fall over. He's just massive and his poor feet are not strong enough. In fact, they are a little bit looser for a newer figure than I would like. And that's kind of a bummer because if you had like a doll stand for him, something like that, you'd be a-okay. But this is definitely not the figure that you want to just leave on your own because if he falls this thing would be like a boulder. It would take everything out. So that's a bit of a hiccup. It's a beautifully sculpted, well-painted, massive action figure, but because he really can't stand on his own, that would be the main gripe for this type of figure. And from that, we'll say little figure, to now this giant, massive general slaughter. I'm not making this up. I'll show you the comparisons on height in just a few. This thing is enormous. The box it came in is enormous, but my God, look at the face on that thing. <laughs> All the spit running down out of the sides of his mouth onto his chin. He's got his purple mohawk. You get to see his ear. One of them has a ring in it. All the gash marks on his armor. He's got his fishnets. His big old gauntlets, his big old wrists and fists and everything else. Look at the paint on that. Look at the detail. He's got his cow skull underoos, whatever you want to call it. Pecs, abs. This thing is a monster. <laughs> He's even got his little fishnets, which then go into his Donatello knee pads. He's got his little hooves. It's a crazy action figure. And I'm not even joking. This thing is stupid big but he's got some stupid big hands to go along with him perfect for holding battle toads he's got the veins you got a little airbrush going on but they're very light and that actually adds to the greatness about this figure because he's got a lot less problem standing because while he is heavy he's not proportionally disproportionate we'll just say now you do have this giant extra head portrait we'll say before he runs into the battle toads right again it's basically the same head portrait it's not that heavy for as big as it is it's a very much a soft vinyl much like this one which is in fact out of the three head portraits is my favorite but again the lighter weight of these added accessories add to this figure because it doesn't weigh it down any more than it needs to. He's even got the blood and the cracked horns and everything else and swapping these heads is easy peasy. It just looks awesome. But again, to look at the giant sheer mass of this figure is hilarious. And it's one that I haven't seen in quite some time in a situation like this outside of, let's say, a Haslab, right? You will get a lot of rotation and movement out of his arms. He has a massive diaphragm ab crunch situation going on where you can really get him looking down at the battle toads. Not a whole heck of a lot of articulation in the legs. Basically, it's a swivel, but again, in supporting this mass, it does work. He does have double jointed knees but you're not gonna get that much out of it. And you'll also have to deal with the knee pad. And then you have some hoove rotation, which again, because they're so massive, it does keep him right side up. And that is a plus because much like Vermin, you don't want this guy going falling anytime soon because this would be like dropping an atomic bomb on your action figure collection. <laughs> now, from the back to the front, He's going to lose some of the detail, right? It's not crazy detailed on his back, 
but there's enough there to be like, okay, well, at least everything continues around, all the paint, everything good about the fronts. And again, the head portraits, swap them out as your leisure. You can really get some decent head articulation out of them. Moves up, moves down. In either case, it's always snarling at those battle toads. So when you have your collection for wave one, all of the characters scale beautifully together. From rat bones and of course rash to zits and pork a pig, these are quite a lot of fun to have on your shelves. If you're an old school Nintendo fan like myself, you need these for your Nintendo collection. But I will say this, those four are fantastic. When it comes to General Vermin, it's a beautifully created action figure, but he's very flimsy in the joints. So while everything else is really working for this figure, that's the big bummer of this big bad. But speaking of big bads, <laughs> oh my God, this General Slaughter is something that I feel like I haven't seen in a very long time. And that's so refreshing because man, oh man, he just overpowers the Battletoads. You can hold the Battletoads in his massive hands. You can put, he's kind of like a playset if you think about it in that sense. He's just a massive 18 inch boss for your figures to battle. And it's just the coolest thing ever, right? But if you were wondering, how big is this figure? Well, here you go. From all the usual companies, from NECA to McFarland to Marvel Legends and Super 7, there you go. It is a giant, massive, hefty bag of a figure. But like I said, if you're an old school Nintendo fan, if you played Battletoads on Game Boy or Nintendo, or much as these are represented in the arcade, Yes, they will go great with all those old school action figures on your shelf. Battletoads is a classic, and they definitely deserved this sort of action figure treatment. But that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Wave 1 of Battletoads action figures by Premium DNA. And just to clarify, I did speak with Premium DNA and they did say they are in talks with Rare at the moment to figure out how they're going to be handling Wave 2 of Battletoads. So leave the comments down below. Which characters would you like to see them do, right? Dark Queen, Pimple, of course. Sky's the limit at this point. But you, of course, have heard my thoughts. And now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Battletoads through and through. It's a knockout debut of an old classic in action figure form. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, when it comes to Battletoads, don't call them a TMNT ripoff. They're their own cool thing. And when they are, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.